my hair in a protective style was the worst thing for my hair at that point. So these are the five things that I changed to grow long and thick hair whilst it's in a protective style. Didn't think your hair could grow in a protective style? Well, I'm here to tell you that it can. I've done it. So whilst I'm telling you the things I changed, you're obviously going to notice that these were the things that I wasn't doing before. So let's just get into it. Starting with number one, and that is deep conditioning. Before applying a protective style, it's so important to make sure you've got all that moisture in your hair. The planning before the protective style is just as important as the protective style itself, even more so. You've got to make sure that moisture is in the hair. The hair has the elasticity it needs and it is sealed, therefore allowing it to go through the process of the protective styling, i.e. plaiting, twisting, what have you. You don't want to put your hair in a protective style with dirty hair, because for one, if you're gonna wear a protective style, it's usually for a longer duration of time than your low manipulative style. Protective styles, I usually go to about two months, two months alone, even a month. It's quite a long time to go with dirty hair whilst you've got residue, product buildup, what have you. Right, so that's the first thing I started doing. I started putting that moisture in my hair and deep conditioning, which then brings me on to number two. Once you've deep conditioned and you've prepped your hair, you need to seal in the moisture. So this is one thing I wasn't doing so much. I wasn't putting the grease on my strands as I do now whilst protective styling. Recently when I had my hair in box braids, I smoothed the grease down my strand. Because my hair is low porosity, it takes a long time for water to penetrate and I have to really slather up my hair with leave-in conditioner and what have you to get the moisture in there. Once I've got the moisture in there, I'm keeping that bad boy in, so I'm gonna seal it and make sure it stays in there, especially for the duration of the two months in which I usually wear my protective style for. This part I definitely think is more so important if you do use synthetic extension hair, because extension hair in general is quite dry to the hair and it usually sucks the moisture out of your strands. So you wanna make sure you've got as much moisture imparted into those strands so you have a good amount of moisture remaining in your hair whilst you have the protective style in. So that's the pre-protective style. Now, during the protective style, you're going to want to leave your hair alone. This brings me on to number three. You're not meant to leave your hair alone necessarily. What am I talking about? What I'm talking about, guys, is maintaining your protective style, which means you could be using spritz daily or put a leave-in conditioner every so often, especially for two months. That's a long period for a hair to go without moisture. Would you leave yourself to not drink water for two months? I do not think so. But like me before, I thought it was necessary that I just left my hair alone and it would do its thing. Oh, it done its thing. It dried up like the Sahara Desert. It was crispy, it was crunchy, it was breaking. Putting my hair in a protective style was the worst thing for my hair at that point because for one, I didn't do the pre-protective style treatment, i.e. number one, deep conditioning, number two, sealing that moisture in, and I left my hair alone. So what do you have to do with your hair during a protective style? If you have not less braids, I have done a video on how I keep my hair moist moisturize during my protective style so you might want to go ahead and watch that one for the most part of your protective style leave it let it do its thing oil your scalp grease your scalp don't oil your scalp or grease your scalp it's up to you but i'm just saying just keep that moisture in there because moisture is key i've done a lot of things to damage my hair i've done a lot of things to dry my hair out so i do have quite a bit of experience and i do think i have somewhat even a smidgen of an idea of what i'm talking about so as i said guys keep that moisture in your hair okay and the best way to figure out how to moisturize your hair before you put in a protective style is figure out your porosity are you low porosity are you high porosity what even is porosity I have low porosity hair, as I said, I've explained this in many videos. Low porosity, you have your hair strand just like so. It's kind of like um, tiles on a roof. What needs to happen for the moisture to get into your strand, the cortex, your hair needs to be lifted, those outer layer, let's just say. Okay, so the outer layer needs to be lifted for moisture, i.e. conditioner or water, what have you, to then enter into the middle of the strand. The way you do that is you can do a heat treatment. So when I deep condition my hair, I deep condition with heat and the layer will open, allow it to enter. And then once I've finished, I rinse my hair, I seal it with hair grease, right down. So again, just, just following on from this tip of uh, not leaving your hair alone, what I did, my routine with my protective style for the two months, I would spritz my hair with water, so either rosemary water or the As I Am Castor Oil water, and I would 
spritz it every three to four days or so. Not every day because that's overkill and I didn't want to mess up my style, but three to four days I think was enough. And then I would seal it with hair grease. And yes, I sealed it with hair grease each and every time I spritzed. Now I wasn't doing the 100 layer challenge, guys. I think there's a misconception with hair grease. And the misconception is you just slather it on and the more you put on, it just coats that hair grease and it just coats another layer of hair grease. That's not the case. When you put hair grease on your hair, over time throughout the week, it starts to wear off. And this aided to the strength and thickness of my hair that it currently is now. Another thing I stopped doing was not wearing a bonnet at night. As far as I was concerned, my hair's in a protective style. It's protected. The strands are tucked into the extension hair. What was I thinking? Not only was the extension hair drying out my hair, so was the cotton pillowcase. I didn't even have a satin pillowcase. I mean, sometimes, if you're a lazy natural like me, sometimes I would have the satin if I could be bothered, but then I started taking it seriously because I saw those disastrous results of what the protective styling did to my hair. Whilst I thought my hair was flourishing, my hair was flopping. Now, I don't want to ruin that hard work, so therefore, I have to put in the work. If you're not really into satin pillowcases and you can't find a bonnet, just for, for instance, like if you have a long protective style like I did, my knotless braids were a waist length. I don't like to manipulate my knotless braids so much. So what I did was buy a really long satin bonnet. So all I had to do, tie my hair like so, like I was gonna put it in a hairband, and then put the bonnet on the top, throw my plaits into the bonnet, shake it, there it is. Here is the bonnet, nice and long. And last but not least, number five, what I have stopped doing is taking out my protective style whilst wet. I've stopped applying moisture to my protective style whilst taking it down. What Lauren, that sounds crazy, I know. It is the best thing for my hair. I need my hair in a stretch state so I'm able to manipulate the strands. If my hair is wet and I'm trying to get all the extension hair out, my hair will start to bunch up the extension hairs down here, everything's all tangled. It is not nice. It's not nice at all. Especially at my roots where I've done the crochet method, i.e. interlocking method. When I have tried to do the takedown with the crochet method on my roots, it was a mess. I had the styling wax in my hair, my roots were twisted, they were curling up, they were tangling up, and actually I broke off more hair than necessary. So now I just do it, as you can see in this takedown method, I take my hair out dry, and then I can just finger detangle, ease it apart. Now keeping in mind, I did have this styling for two months. So let me just show you the amount of shedding. So this was the shedding that I had. The thickness came back, that's another thing. I know I have fine strands, and I know my hair growing up and in my 20s was quite dense. After doing wash and goes for, whew, what, five, six years, seven years, my strands were still fine, but the density started to go. So my hair became more thin, it became more stringy, hence why I no longer do wash and goes, but that is for a whole nother video. Anywho, now I've left my hair to do its thing and I haven't got my fingers dragging through my hair as often doing a wash and go. The thickness has come back and it is beautiful. I love it. So if you yourself want to see how I got this thickness and how I kept my hair moisturized, this video coming up now is just for you.